my God. We're here. Hey. You just smile. Oh. Um, you want to show them? Wow. Show them. It's my second YouTube video. It's already not going according to plan. I started this video with a completely different intention on what I wanted to do. The plan was prep the GT3 RS and take it up to Laguna Seca to live out something I've been dreaming of for a very long time. But now I'm considering that maybe I can't even afford to own a car that I already paid for. So it sparked a discussion in my own brain that I thought that you guys would be interested in and stuff that you don't really hear people talk about, which is the financial hurdles of owning a very expensive car. Which to me is a pretty interesting theory considering you have what may be the ultimate driving car. But now its current price tag sort of makes you afraid to drive it. Let's not get it twisted. This is not a video about me flexing on owning an expensive car, because who gives a shit? This is me wanting to share some knowledge on the experience of owning something that may be a little bit out of your comfort zone and the things you should consider when you're going to buy a very expensive car that you plan to either keep forever or possibly sell in the near future and how to extract the most value out of that car. Because there are certain things that depreciate a car and certain things that devalue a car. And I wanna talk a little bit about that because that's how I've gotten from driving things like an E46 M3 through a 997 GT3 RS while enjoying a wide spectrum of cars and getting to build, modify, track, and drive them and make some money along the way to where I could actually afford something like this. And I still totally intend to track the GT3. I checked a quote from two vendors, $2,255. With a 10% deductible. That's a pretty easy decision not to go. If it were dry, I would take the risk and run the track event and just be safe and make sure I stay out of people's way or I watch my mirrors and make sure no one's trying to dive bomb me. But in the wet, I think it's a little bit too much of a risk. Spending $2,200 on a policy where even if something did happen, there's a $25,000 deductible is insane to me. That's what kind of sparked the thought of this video. And I wanted to break it into three categories on what affects the resale value of a car, and what you can do to help save the value of the car that you're currently driving if you're going to be in the market to getting rid of it or you give a shit about the value of your asset. But before we get to that, I know everyone's gonna ask the most important question, which is, who is this dog? This is Chewy and he's not mine. He's actually a friend's dog that we're watching for the weekend. Really big scared boys. Well, you're a big sweetie though. So yeah, one true love with Champ. Suspension parts. 
parts and things like that do wear out. Mileage isn't really wearing on the engine to a point where like I wouldn't buy a car. Don't stress mileage that much. I think the next two are slightly more important. I went out driving, I ended up here. If you don't wanna see this nonsense, skip through it. I got it marked down below. But at the beginning of my vlog, I told you I would get a lot of the old crew back on the vlog. So if you wanna see some of the idiots, stick around for the next couple of minutes. Look who it is! 2024 is the year of the G-Body, okay? The last couple of weeks, the boys have been grinding to uh, get Killer Mike's Grand National that we had sitting at Hoonigan for like five years. Mike is up for a Grammy. He just got the thing pretty finished. You know, finished yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I can't show you guys that. They're going to be doing a show on Hemmings, so watch that when that comes out. But I was just in town, so I wanted to pop by and say hi to the boys. Oh my God, look who it is, folks. And look who it is. Guys, the band is all here. We're here. Hey, we're even Soupy, I haven't seen. What was that? Did you just smile? No. What, what's that? No, no. Close that thing up. <laughs> what's up, bud? Dang, is this you? Yeah. Did your plan to store this at the paint shop backfire? They finished they it finished quick. They finished the car. So now, now I gave him another car. So Dang, like, we're this looks nice. Dude, you have been driving this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. LS3, it's finally done. The body kit's on. It, it, it works good. I saw Soupy smile today and actually drive a car that he built. The whole time I've known him, I've made fun of him. He had a Mark IV Super and an FD, but he drove like a Honda Element. I still love my Element. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, the whole team out here! God. Oh my God. Oh, I finally like, influenced oh, them. You want to show them? Wow. Show them it. Show them, show, them, show them it. Yeah, show up. <laughs> oh, I wasn't oh, talking about that. I was keeping it up here. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to show you the car. I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, the boys built something really cool for Killer Mike. It's going to come out on a Sean Hemmings sometime in the future. February 13th. Day for before sure, Valentine's. Sure. Put yeah. it on the calendar. All right, folks. <laughs> Break your girl's heart. All right, we're back after a long tangent of spending most of the day out getting sidetracked. We're on to the second piece that will depreciate your car more than anything. Talking paintwork. In the collector car world, one of the biggest value detractions or point of concern is gonna be paintwork. And I'm gonna use RX-7 here as a perfect example because I am a big proponent of, it's okay to have a repainted car. The NSX I got for incredibly cheap because it was repainted. And a lot of the NSX forum guys were super scared off by it. But I went, I checked out the car and it looked beautiful. This is a CYM FDRX-7. They only made 350 of them and guess what? The yellow from the 90s faded really bad. So this car has a full respray. The reason why repainted cars generally don't hold value like an original paint car is because they could cover up a lot of previous damages, accidents, other crap, rust repair, all sorts of things that you can now not see because it's not original. But in a previous lifetime, I ran a body shop, I worked at a body shop, I did paint work. So I have a pretty good eye for what to look for in a repainted car so you could know if it was done properly, if it's hiding some stuff, or if it's just a crummy respray and you should avoid it altogether. Basically, if you're gonna buy a car with a repaint, you might save a couple bucks. Well, that could be a good thing because sometimes a car could be done really well. Here are the quick things to look for. Check all the seals, everything that should have come off in a paint job. Bad paint jobs will have left the windows in. And oftentimes you'll be able to get under these rubber moldings here and see paint on the rubber, overspray onto the rubber, or you're even like a really hard line here. Also, you can tell on all the doors, all the moldings were removed because there's no overspray, there's no hard lines. You could check all around the car. I do it on every single panel because if a car wasn't fully resprayed and just the panel was, it's usually a dead giveaway if a window wasn't removed or a door handle or something like that and they just taped around. It's usually really easy to spot repainted cars if you don't have a paint meter. Second thing you want to do, door jams. This is one of the easiest ways because taking windows out is one thing. Door jams are pretty tricky because you usually don't perfectly finish a door jam. Come in here, check all the points that you'd have to remove, such as these, and then this is always the culprit. And honestly, even though this car I think was painted really neat, where you could tell, right here right in the door jam. You can look and you can see a little bit of roughness because they didn't remove the door. So they probably took everything off the door, but they left the doors on to paint the car. So you could tell in here it's a little rough. That's a dead giveaway of a respray. Here's my pro tip 
that I don't think anyone normally does. Here is a spot that almost always can find out. The gas door. So the reason why, you could tell right here, boom, they didn't take off. Inner plastic and a little bit of overspray got on this black plastic piece here. Pretty much no one ever cleans up this edge. What I mean by that is just a little bit of overspray or a little bit of roughness that didn't get wet sanded and polished. So those are the three things I always look for to try to figure out if a car has been repainted and if it's been repainted well. I'm pointing out this on my own car because I am someone who always buys a car with an intention of how may I have to sell this in the future? What are potential future buyers gonna think? Even though this car has a couple telltale signs that it's been repainted, I think it was done in a way that was super neat. Also, it was painted back in 2003 and it's withstood the test of time. Don't always let repainted cars deter you from purchasing them. Just make sure it's done well. And another quick note on that is when we're talking about cars that are collector cars or something that will want to have a value down the road is original colors. If this car were originally a Montego blue or red and repainted CYM, it would actually be worth tens of thousands of dollars less. Keep that in mind when you have a car, even if you're like on the verge of like refreshing a car and you want to change the color is I would say 90% of the time, a color change is going to take value out of the car. When we're talking collector cars, we're talking things like the FDR X7. If you have a project car that is something completely different, change the color of it, it may not apply to you or it may even increase the value of the car, but we're talking this specifically. An RX7, that CYM, pulls a big premium. Uh, RX7 that was not and then was painted CYM, probably cheaper than if it was just the original color it came in. I'm not gonna become just like a type of guy that only drives his Porsche to Cars and Coffee, but we're going to a Cars and Coffee. This is where Cars and Coffee takes a turn. And these boys bust out the big rigs. Oh my God. But Mike, Mike's still holding true. He's not gonna bust out the bro dozer. No, we had to block him in. some bodyguards. Oh, this is the door ding police here? This is the first time I've seen this in real life, outside of SEMA. Yeah. This looks great. Dude, I love it. Yo, Super Cab is the move, man. Yeah. It looks absolutely ridiculous on, what is that, 40s? 39s. 39s. Dude, this is the ultimate Cars and Coffee poser rig. Has this thing ever been on? Off road? Never. <laughs> I'm only on my second second set of fiberglass in two months, so yeah, it's never been off road. Hell yeah. Alright, I should probably finish this video by now, right? Back to the shop. This is embarrassing. I got another Raptor, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. But I do think that it may be an interesting topic for a video on why I buy so many Raptors and just why I do a lot of the car things I do anyway. So comment below if you'd like to hear me ramble on about the financial benefits of buying so many Raptors and similar cars. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna talk about accidents. This is probably the biggest one for pretty much any collector car. And it may be the reason why I actually didn't end up going to Laguna. See, in any car you have, the accident on your Carfax is gonna affect the value. 
But when you have a high price tag car like the 3RS, we're talking losing FDRX7's worth of value. I'm not looking to ever sell the 3RS, but I don't know if I really care about what the value is, but there is something inside of me that's like, I try to be as safe as possible with it because that's insane. And it's sort of nice knowing I have a lot of equity in the car if I do need to liquidate and get rid of it and you know make some money, but that stresses me out. Not just on track, because I know I'm safe on track. I know I could drive the car like eight tenths and not crash it. Accidents happen in the rain. It's especially more difficult to understand if someone else is gonna crash into me. It's nuts. And I think about that all the time. I gotta say, it definitely takes a lot of enjoyment out of the car because even simple things like sitting in traffic in LA could be stressful because you're like paying attention in front of you, side of you, behind you, making sure your car's not gonna rear end you, making sure you're not gonna hit a couch cushion or a ladder that just happens to be in the middle of the 10 freeway. Like a lot goes on. I actually get like pretty mentally tired from driving this car around and like it's insured, it's covered, it's if something happens, like I, I I could be covered for the, you know, the damages or if it's a total loss, like it's fine. But I, I think a lot about like the instance where if someone crashes into me and like just damages a bumper or like has to go through insurance, you're pretty much taking a ton of value out of the car and that's sort of lame. That's where my head was at when it came to going to this track day and deciding to no longer do it. I don't know if a lot of you guys would agree with me on that, but like, it's a big step to take. I know I hang out with guys like DDE and all this other stuff where like, if you crash a car at track, the YouTube video, the ad rev will probably make enough money for you to offset that. But like, I just started my channel and I'm very appreciative for all you guys who are tuning in. I think this video will make me 200 bucks. So it's not really working out on the like, I could total my expensive supercar. So yeah, that's why I decided to pass on this whole thing and it sparked kind of an interesting discussion in my own brain and I figured some of you guys would enjoy it. And and look, I'll be honest, after all the support from my previous vlog, I really wanna start making content. I need to find things to be more consistent. So I made a video like this and I don't really know if you guys will enjoy it or if it'll do well, but let me know what you think in the comments because I wanna figure out ways where I can make content that isn't always about going out and doing something really crazy or building a car. I wanna have a way where I can like, just kind of brain dump what I think you guys may find value in. Me teaching you how to like buy and sell cars or how I financially can get from one car to the other and like things of that nature, I think would be kind of fun because let's face it, I'm not always out driving, although I'd like to be. I'm not the best car builder. There's tons of other great YouTube vloggers out there. So I'm trying to think of what can I offer you guys that's different from what everyone else is doing. If you like this type of video, let me know. If it doesn't really work and it was kind of stupid, also let me know because I want to do what I enjoy, but I also want to like provide you guys with some value and what'll be fun for you guys to watch. The feedback from you guys is super helpful. I really, really love and appreciate the support that everyone has given me recently. I had a rough month trying to like muster up the courage and the motivation to, to get back and start making content. I really love doing it. And honestly, the support from all you guys really, really helps me continue to make it. So thanks to everyone. I really support it. I still don't have merch lined up yet, but it's going to come out soon. So if you want to support, just stay tuned, continue to watch the videos. I really appreciate it. Not done. I have one more thing, but this one's for you guys. I had mentioned that the C10 pickup was for sale, but there's actually a couple cars here at the Speakeasy that are for sale. So I wanted to mention it, how to potentially buy them. First off, uh, the C10, the pickup truck. This is a four by four manual transmission truck from South Dakota. It's in pretty good shape. Ron's got brand new American racing wheels and tires that are gonna get mounted and come with the sale. If you want that truck, message 777 style on Instagram, not me, it's not my truck. All right, next up, a Mark III. This is a VR6 all wheel drive car and it's got a fully built three liter with Shrick cams and a bunch of other goodies. It's a project, not currently running. It needs a lot of work. Jason's looking to get like 8,500 bucks for this thing, but it's a Euro import, it's super cool. It's got Euro bumpers, Euro fenders, obviously. It's got the built VR, it's all wheel drive. So super cool car. This is Jason's, I'm so over the internet. Hit him up if you're interested. Next up, he's getting rid of this beautiful Op S2. This thing is super rad. It's really clean. It's got a five cylinder turbo. Uh, it's an authentic Op car. It's got the A9s on it. It's all sauced up, turbo five cylinder. He's also selling that. I forgot what he wants for it, but hit him up if you're interested. Those cars are for sale, currently nothing else. Else. I think Sam was considering selling either his R32 or the Cabrio. I think this one might be on the chopping block. It's a really clean white on white, a manual convertible. That's Sam Dobbins car if you wanna hit him up for it. I'm not sure if he wants to sell it, but if it's up your alley, hit him up. Last up, E36, not for sale. Although right now, I'd sell it because I hate it. But 
Transmission is currently out. We got it right here. The trans is fine. We just got a load of parts from American Powertrain. New clutch. This is currently a part. Got the headers out. We got the trans out. I think I got to pull the engine out to put the transmission back in, which isn't going to be fun. I got a busy week this week, so I can't do it, but I'm hoping next week I'll have time to get the clutch back in the car, and then we're going to take that thing out to Truck Walla. So more content on the E36, more driving it soon. But for now, thanks so much for watching the episode. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to try to do this weekly, so maybe next Thursday there'll be another upload. Thanks everyone for the support. I'm out.